Regardless of where you are, good something or other. Thank you for joining another live edition of the Round Table, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, WWDB TV Studios, right here in, you know, we're just down the road from Santa Fe Station, if you know where that is. That That'll is. give you an idea. Right yeah. The road. We keep our money because we're just too darn close to want to give it away. Absolutely. Anyway, to my far right, <laughs> he is known as the mouth around here, Mr. The, George Miklos. The mouth. I like that. You like that? Well, you I started did. it. I did. This I way it gives us a whole new moniker to mess around. And it's a potty mouth at times. And it's a <laughs> But that's, it's a good thing sometimes. <laughs> we keep everybody. It's real show. crappy Look sometimes. Out. You remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Pardon uh, the pun, yeah, pardon yeah, the pun. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm taking, I know. Be careful, it's a tiny ball man. I know. Uh, oh, it's the I mean, man I, sitting in the middle, I mean, known as one of the best punt returner, kick returners, receiver ever, ever. wear What's a up? Denver Bronco jersey, Mr. Rick Upchurch. Hey, Jack, how, how, you how we doing? doing? How, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Good to see y'all, man. He, Good he, to be back. Touchdown! Yes! I just want to say, I was the, Rick made the top 300 players in the NFL list. So I, I, did I, see, yeah. I always like saying that. Top 300. What? Top 300 of all time. Huh? 299? No, 300. 300. I barely right. made it. <laughs> so, would that be Michelle relevant in that list? <laughs> <laughs> well, you are far That's like being in second place, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a wrestler, Mark Henry, who always says, if you ain't first, you're last. You're last. <laughs> so it don't That's matter. right. I agree with but that. But everybody's first around here, especially you all out there tuning in to watch what shenanigans and topics we're going to have fun with today. A lot serious. Some all over the place. Of course, later on by the end of the show, it'll be George's favorite segment. That's right. America Speaks. But wait a minute, though. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't mean to cut you off. That's okay. But folks, <laughs> we have the most outstanding Hall of Famer voice that you could ever That's have right. doing your show. And we have who, George? Mr. Aaron the Voice Phillips. Aaron the Voice. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. sorry. Oh, great. Well, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Listen, last week I was sicker than a dog. It's funny to say how the voice had no voice. Let yeah, me tell you. Yeah, yeah. But thank you very much. I Absolutely. appreciate that. Listen, we we thank everybody for joining us today. It's what, February 9th. Can you believe Already. it just seemed like yesterday we New were Year's. turning the corner on New Year's yep. and everything else? And now here we are, February 1st. The, what, in my opinion, one of the greatest months in the calendar for a couple of reasons. Number one, because it's Valentine's Day. Not that we need a day like that to tell somebody we love. But just don't remind it's Denise just a, about it. <laughs> sorry, Denise, don't listen. Yeah. But let's face it, many people believe it's a holiday created by the card industry and everything. Right. Right? Right. My my dad's birthday is this month. My mom, if she was alive, it would have been her birthday this month and all sorts of stuff. But really from a historical perspective, and we'll get into this more, more throughout the show, we have stuff we'll share. It is Black History Month, where we get to share the, the importance of really everybody in, in community, but especially the African-American community that for hundreds of years, I almost said thousands of years, but yeah. hundreds of years, um, really their contributions in life has really gotten unnoticed. And I say that because before I went on the air, Rick has a list of inventions that we all use every flipping day of the year. Yeah, I saw you see that list. I, I know it's like it goes yeah. on. It's like uh, it's like one of the Torah scrolls over yeah, here. It goes so on, and on, right. and on, right. on and on and on and on. This is just great. part of it. Yeah, exactly. And listen, anything we talk about in the next hour, it barely fits on the top of a pinhead of everything we can talk about. That's right. 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 So please understand, folks, that when we talk about the things we're and we're going to do this as a series over the coming weeks of our show for the month. Um, but it's vast. It's pretty it's pretty cool. The list that you started with when we look at we didn't know who and what for the items. But we'll get to all of that. Of course, we got America Speaks. I know we talked about Oh, we talked about check this one out. Yeah, a doctor. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. He Jin Kwai. Yes, he Jin Kwai. Did I say it right? You did. And I didn't. You're, even very, you're pretty good. Damn. I tried this once or twice. <laughs> um, but he got into some uh, hot water about gene editing babies. I Gee, what is that? Uh, well, he went in and messed around with some genes in his mind, using the words from the article, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Trying to create better people is kind of the gist I got. Absolutely. Right? Less disease. Um, nicer people. Nicer people. <laughs> changing their attitudes. Uh, all of those type of things. And once again, this is still a piece of the AI 
type of uh, things that are going on in our society. Yeah, I mean, that sounds all well and good, but there's always going to be some evil scientist or doctor that's going to get a hold of this and start making baby monsters or whatever bad right. people. There's always somebody. Well, you know, just like the it. island of Dr. Monroe. Remember that, yeah, show, yeah. that show? Yeah. He was on that island, man, and he was genetically, man, trying to um, do animals and do people and animals and all of that type of stuff right. in that whole deal. But if you remember, if you could, if you look at the, all of the hier hieroglyphs there uh, in the pyramids and you're okay. in Egypt, you look at some of those hieroglyphs and some of the people were look like animals. They right. look like birds. They look like dogs. They look like cats. Well, what was the animal with the guy who was half man, half horse in mythology? I forget I mean, his name. Minotaur. What is it? A minotaur. Minotaur. A minotaur. Not only that, but yeah. he's got a great spot in commercials now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but 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 yeah, sorry, send me a bill, all state. But anyway, uh, but I think that's kind of what you're talking. But look, in my opinion, and this is my normally, the things we see being done today, they're not fresh ideas. No. Like you just alluded to, this stuff's been done for thousands of years. And like any fashion, for instance, everything gets recycled at some point, right? Absolutely. Right. Look at Jurassic Park. When you look at Jurassic Park, what was the, the number one scientist? What was he trying to do? He said he got a mosquito that would that had been uh, in some uh, in some amber okay. and some sap. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And he got caught in there. And what he was able to do, he was able to drill down into that amber and pull the DNA out of the mosquito and genetically build another mosquito. That's crazy. Watch Jurassic Park. I, I couldn't watch just the first one. I have not watched any others. Yeah, since. absolutely. It's like watching Jaws. I watched the first one. I ain't watching any more. I never you, went back in the ocean after that show. Absolutely. Can you imagine Tyrannus the T Rex? Oh my God. Can you oh, imagine he, them DNA and rebuilding that thing and yeah. humans? Well, what? Listen, a couple of years ago, and and I one of the shows I like to watch is Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates, and he did a story that they're trying to bring back clone. The woolly mammoth. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Why? Yeah. And I say why from the standpoint of what's so special about the woolly mammoth that that's the animal from all those millions of years ago that they want to bring well, I back. I think they're pretty, they were pretty docile. I think they just ate veggies, trees, and plants. And yeah, but now in today's society, they, I doubt they would stay docile. They're right. not pets, you know? Right. But right. why them? Hi. Yeah. Well, well, well I, I think because they feel like maybe genetically it, it would be easier for them. I'm sure they probably looked at all of the animals that they could think about, and they probably looked at and scientists said, you know what? Genetically, we can probably do this with them. I'm not sure, but why, like I said, why, like you said, why would you you know, get the woolly mammoth and that whole deal. Maybe they're trying to hook them up, man, with the, with the elephant and, and, and genetically make them better, maybe stronger or whatever. Who knows? But don't we already have that in the elephant? <laughs> yeah, we Minus do. the tusks. I think we there's do. other things we could do with that. But also, you know, those guys get a lot of money, too. Research they get a grants. lot of research yeah, grants and that whole deal as well. Sure. And, you know, money talks and everything else walks. That's right. Well, you, you can say it the way it's supposed to be. No, I'm going to let you potty mouth. I'm going to let you <laughs> yeah, say like, it. You're the mouth. <laughs> you're the mouth. <laughs> Bullshit walks. Okay, there you go. <laughs> By the way, uh, real quickly before we forget, I don't know if she's listening, but is there a special shout out that you'd like to Oh, do? yeah. Happy birthday to my wife on the first. She was turned i'm not gonna say no, don't it don't say it but she looks like she's about 16. no i'm just joking well, she does well, she, she does she really looks well I puts you in a whole other category but the other day she's walk. <laughs> i know but the other day she was walking and she was walking and stepped off the edge of the of the uh, sidewalk and uh fractured her her ankle so mm -hmm. she's at home in an air boot she's down for about six uh six weeks and uh oh, yeah and, and, and she's just bored now in that whole deal but but uh you know what baby you'll be all right i got your back don't even worry about it. There you go. We've so been there and done that. I know how that feels, and Denise knows how that feels. So, yeah. uh, Denise, we were a, we want you to get better. Donna, we want yeah, you get, Donna, we want you to get better. My wife has fallen up the steps and has gotten hurt. Up the steps. How do you do that? That's pretty good. Gravity in reverse, huh? Let me let me tell you. My <laughs> wife has <laughs> so many things I can respond to that with. We're married 34 years on our honeymoon. We're walking the beaches of St. Lucia, and all of a sudden, as we're walking, she hears this little pop in her foot. Her bunions in her toe burst. Oh! So we come back, and right away, we got to go to the podiatrist. This is how I started. Now she's fallen upstairs, rolled her ankles on a wonderful curb. She's done this. Sir. So I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I yeah. need some of those CBD things sometimes. I know. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> just, just 
oh. just you may happen to mention it. I have a brand new box of all kinds of goodies. Excellent. Oh my Excellent. God! Look at you, man. Yeah. So I, one of one of the things everybody will notice is that uh, we took the. Uh, oh, hey, Patrick. Thank you. You see the logos? Isn't that cool? Yeah, we put up the logos. Uh, of course, really, the kind of over each of us over right. my head, Planet Harvest Help. I like it. The secret, uh, which we're still trying to figure out what the secret is. He won't tell us. Yes, That's I Rick did. Stuff. <laughs> I, and then Chew IQ there over George. We're going to keep that stuff on the screens just to make things more uh, visible and easier because our producer thought that the products on the desk just didn't come across well right. and he's got pictures. You couldn't see them. No. <laughs> so our producer has got slides and, and pictures of stuff and make it easier for everybody to see. Anyway, okay. So believe it or not, our first segment's just about over. That's what? Is what? It, it's nuts. It's crazy, isn't it, how time flies? Well, you know, when we're running our mouths, guys, you know, time just flies. <laughs> well, speaking of running our mouths. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the mouth. Uh, you, this past weekend, you were at yeah. our Pro Bowl. Uh, I watched it. What I was, was that like? For I was looking at <laughs> the Pro Bowl was great. But the, but the thing, but before that, you know, we met with all of the families. We did a couple of camps this weekend. We right. did the All-American oh, Camp right, yes. at Meadows, uh, Meadows School. And mm -hmm. then we did uh, another one there at Cimarron. And we had a great, wonderful turnout. That's what we do with the NFL alumni chapter here in uh, in Las Vegas. We go around working with our young people mm -hmm. in that Odell. We had a great crowd. Parents came out. Uh, I had so much fun. The kids are just great. The athletic, man, that these kids are athletic out there, mm -hmm. ripping and running at Odell. And then went to the Pro Bowl, and I'm like, man, this is going to be okay. It's going to be all right, right? And I get there, man, and I slept through half of the doggone Pro Bowl. Yeah. That's how boring it was to me. Now, the really stadium was. looked packed, though, didn't it? The stadium looked yeah, packed. Yeah, the stadium though. was packed. Yes, it you know was what I didn't like is that they played three separate flag football. Just pick the one long, one long game, four quarters, one long flag football game instead of three separate ones. Well, well, you know, you know who uh, who who advised Roger Goodell to do this, right? No. You guys know, right? The Players Association. No, <laughs> no, who? Russell Westbrook. Not Wessel, Russell Westbrook, Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson. Yeah. And why was that? I didn't know that. He yeah. suggested the... He suggested it to uh, Roger Goodell to do the and flag why, football. Why? What was his, he said that was... Peyton said... got rid of all his boys in the locker room. <laughs> oh, he, said, he, said, he said, hey, guys, this is the easiest way, man, to keep the guys from getting hurt, mm -hmm. right? To protect your investment, right? And now the guys won't go around knocking each other out on the ground in that whole deal. So there's safety in it. That's the number one thing we're talking about, safety. So let me ask you this question, though. Is it really then, is it worth having a Pro Bowl-esque weekend like this? Because to me, it was the game. The, the real football game, it was an all-star game. It was intended to be a trip at the end of the season. I think, I think the Pro Bowl started going down when they took it away after the Pro Bowl. Right. Because even the Super Bowl players yeah, supposed to be yeah. deserved a right. It was like a getaway. It was a like, hey, go to Hawaii for a That's week. That's right. right. You know what I enjoyed about it was when you would see your favorite team and all the helmets on the field. When the AFC right. would come out, you'd see maybe three Raiders or two right. Broncos or four, you know, on the NFC, four Giants. I was, on the I always count. I was, it was excited to right. see my team's sure. helmets on the 2009, team. I, I mean, was maybe there. wear those. Do the flag football and wear the helmets. I, I, I agree. Or baseball caps at least. I agree, but it once again, the owners are about protecting their investment. Sure. It's plain and simple. And I, I, Remember back in the day when we were playing in the Pro Bowl, it wasn't we didn't we weren't making this type of money and we weren't that type of investment. Right. So we we could go out and make that little extra money. But let me tell you something, when it came fourth quarter, guys were getting knocked around and beat right. up and that type of stuff. And some guys did get hurt. Sure. Well, they some did guys have money incentive for this Pro Bowl, the winners and losers yeah. got but yeah, it was less but, but it's less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Was it, it was, who I believe it was Dave Meggett years oh, yeah. ago when he went as the and they he was playing volleyball or something and he heard himself playing a like a pickup game. Absolutely. So I get the protection of, of injury and obviously it's a money grab at some point when it has to devolve yeah. to this mm -hmm. for the owners, right? And, and yeah, and not only that, they already had the advertisers already. Right. So those advertisers are saying. Hey man, you got to do this doggone game, but otherwise we're going to pull our money and we won't ever do it again. I remember Elway. I think it was Elway had something in his contract. He couldn't ski. He couldn't snow ski for just. Well, that's in all of our. That's in all of our contracts. Oh, Everybody's got. Yeah, that's in all oh, of our contracts. Well, anything. I couldn't get on a dirt bike. They they got after me for riding a dirt bike. Well, remember Ben Roethlisberger when he yeah. had his motorcycle accident? Yeah. He was supposed to be Could on a cycle. Killed. That was written in his wow. in his agreement. So I get protection, but. I have to say the one facet about the the games that I kind of like today or that I saw over the weekend, Peyton Manning did it right in that he kept the Raider, David Carr, 
kept him to the last game with Jacobs and everybody he else. Did the right thing. Did and the right thing. Carr did good. Sure. Considering. Right. Considering, but I mean, yeah. he did it. That had to have been awkward. Sure. You're there representing. You had Raiders on your shirt. Right. You know you're on your way out. The crowd, at least, it gave them an opportunity to recognize him to whatever degree they wanted to, and I just thought Peyton was smart about doing that. He was, and I mean that was really innovative. It really was. Absolutely. And, and once again, it, I think for David Carr, that was a good thing for him yeah, as well. Absolutely. To be able to say bye to his fans and yep. and that whole deal because he's you know he's leaving and he's going somewhere else and that whole deal. But right. I think once again for him to go out there and say, "Hey, gang, you know what? Thank you so very much for what you've done." And Peyton, right. you know the class act that he is. He came up with that and uh, made it really good. Right. All right, with that, we're running a minute or two behind. I don't want to get our sponsors mad. This show is brought to you by Planet Harvest Health. You can check out their products, planetharvesthealth.com. And, of course, as you see the other logos, True IQ, and the secret is there as well. For the boys, boy, we're going to get into it next with some great quizzes about Black History Month and inventions. <laughs> we'll be right back. Anxiety, depression, PTSD, ADHD, pain, inflammation, dealing with mental or physical health issues or know someone who is? Relax, refresh, recover, revive. Natural health alternatives using hemp-derived CBD and other cannabinoids found in hemp are increasingly becoming more effective in managing various symptoms that affect your body, state of mind, and daily life. Planet Harvest Health's mission is to help those looking for natural, new, and better solutions for a healthier way of life. Specializing in small batch, handcrafted alternatives, providing higher quality and a cost-effective product. Go to planetharvesthealth.com for more information and education on how we can help you. Hey everybody, I am Aaron Phillips, you are... I'm Governor Val Brown Klingelhofer. And we host what kind of show? We host the most fabulous show on this network you've ever seen. It's all about Kiwanis and what's going on in our, our different cities. And Kiwanis Connects is the title, and you can watch us every Friday morning, 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time, right on Facebook or WWDB-TV. Say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Aloha. All right. Maybe we need somebody to invent a new clock in the studio. Anyway, welcome back to the roundtable. Aaron Phillips, Rick Upchurch, the man simply known as the mouth, George Miklos. Thank you for tuning in. By the way, if you do have to leave the visual, you got to go out and pick up dinner or the kids or whatever, make sure you download WWDB TV to your phones, your, your Android products. Yeah. And if you have the Apple products, WWDB TV LV must be added to that one. Download the apps because, listen, when there's not a show live, you have some of the best music. You have some of the old-time TV shows. Radio, all, shows. Uh, radio shows. Sorry, TV, radio, same shit. Um, <laughs> what, is you calling it radio? Huh? I thought we're, we're not TV. I don't know what we are anymore. Uh, it's a hybrid. Anyway, I was told I have a face for radio. Why am I seeing myself right. in the camera? <laughs> anyway, so download it. Take us on the go. Listen to all of the great music, the shows, and catch any of the other shows that are called WWDB TV home. We've got some new shows coming up down the horizon. We've got some great planted shows. Anyway, gentlemen, doggone it. Let's get started. I want to okay. get into that list. So however you want to handle that's it, maybe a little competition, list. a little contest with people, but let's, let's see. We're celebrating black history month each of the weeks in February while we're on the air. So you came up with a great idea. Talk about what, what you brought up as an idea to go start with. Well, what I did was, you know, everything, everyday things that we use, and people don't know who invented them. No one knows where it even started. Yeah. I mean, they look around and they say, well, who did it? Right. Right. I wonder who invented well, this Well, thing. yeah. Who invented this phone? No, nobody knows. Right. And so and a lot of folks, once again, black history wasn't really taught to me because I went to, you know, primarily a on white high school right. in that mm -hmm. deal, so I didn't get mm -hmm. this this type of teaching in that deal. I know who George Washington is. I know who uh, Abraham Lincoln is. I know who all J Thomas Jefferson. I know who all these guys are in that deal. But then when you look around, you say to yourself, "Well, who invented and made these things in that deal and gave everybody else the idea to what to make it better?" Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when I I got got to looking around and found some some black history and mm -hmm. about inventions in that old deal and what black folks have, have sure. made in that old deal. Sure. And when I looked at it, uh, when you go outside and you call your air conditioning guy mm -hmm. and he goes out to that air conditioning in that old deal, 
that air conditioning uh, unit was 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 made by Frederick M. Jones, an African American man. Not carrier like our producer. No, not thought. carrier. And that was done in 1949. 1949. Now, 1949. That's relatively recent. Well, like and you mentioned, I'm it. older than air conditioning. <laughs> You're older than dirt. <laughs> now I have read articles. Again, there might be some controversy where they did say that Carrier was the inventor. So I don't know where the misconception is, or where the difference is, or where the history books are at. Where they what? What I'm saying guy is guy. what I'm. What I just said is that once again, when they invented it, they invented the unit. People might have man, it you know, made it better. Okay, so maybe that, so this is the actual the invention, the actual initial invention, and then maybe somebody else made it better. Absolutely, gotcha. just like Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry is the original rock and roller. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Who made it better? Elvis. Elvis Presley. Right. Okay, that's that's a great, that's what that's I'm a great way to yeah, that's a great way to position it. That, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? okay, that's cool. And then and then when you talk about oh. The ice cream scooper. Oh, have you ever had an ice cream scooper? I have plenty of them. Oh man, that's some good stuff, man. Ice cream scooper, the Alfred Al, Alfred I Crail. Now I wonder what the moment was when <laughs> Alfred invented I, it, because yeah. we had spoons. I'm right. assuming before. When, when did he invent it? What yeah, year? he invented that in uh, 1897. Mm. Jesus. So what were they scooping ice cream out with before that? I didn't even know they had ice their cream. Their hands. No, I didn't stop. even know. I mean, their hands, man. Like you can scoop with your hands, man. Maybe a piece of bark off the tree. I, don't know. I didn't even know they had ice cream in 1897. Yeah, they. You know what? They could make. They could make it. You know wow. why? What they would do is get milk. Right. They would get some ice, and then right. you know they could sure. get ice in that whole deal, right. and they would put it in this thing. They had they an would, ice box, theoretically. Yeah. Yeah. And they well, would did they it. have ice boxes back then? Well, they had to have. Yeah, I, I would think ice boxes would have just started coming in. Right. Just, that time. just coming into it wow. to okay. exist. Well, but so yeah, it's, it's curious. So listen, ideas come if you watch Back to the Future. Right, Doc Brown hit his head on the toilet to come up with the flux flux capacitor. Right. Yeah. I'd love to. It's a great light point to this. When did this guy realize I need to scoop my ice cream better than using my hands or right, a spoon or a, or a piece of tree? Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh man. That's, I that's mean, and, and yeah. just thinking about that, yeah. here's another one. What about a biscuit cutter? You know, <laughs> is that the, what the little yeah, round? Yeah, thing that's is? a little round thing. You you go and you you know yeah. when you have the dough laid out. Yeah, and you just yeah. take the the mold. Yeah. Who is that? Alexander P. Ashburn. And he invented that in 1875. That, that came out before the ice cream scooper. Right. That's right. Well, yeah. Maybe he tried using the biscuit oh. scooper and it wasn't holding enough when he was scooping the ice cream. Oh, right. wait a minute. Here's another one. The thing that we get on all the time to get us up and down, the elevator, the right? Elevator. The elevator. Alexander Miles, he invented that in 1867. So, folks, you got to realize and understand yes. that in the African-American community, and with our legacy and history, a lot of the things that you use were invented by men of color, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why African-American history. Two years after the Civil War. Yeah, two years after the two Civil years War. After the Civil War. Yeah. And that's why I don't understand why some folks here in America don't want to teach African-American studies in their schools, mm -hmm. in their school system. Because if you don't, in, in, you know, include African-American studies, you're leaving out a big part of America right? Mm -hmm. and how America was developed, built, and way we continue to develop and build it. Yeah, yeah I don't remember being educated on this when I was a kid or in high school or grade school either. I mean, yeah, you got certain, the you, certain, maybe certain historical figures, maybe that. We yeah, but the things we them. learned back then when we were in school was not this. No. It was about slavery. It was about, right. Right. It was you never, know, Lincoln right. ending slavery. Right. And all right. that. That's what we learned. Right. Martin right. Luther King, That's right. Martin Luther that King and yeah. all that. That's stuff. right. And, and, and then you talk about what? The golf tee. Okay. The golf, the golf tee. tee. Yeah. Black Some people not, play golf. You mean someone Come in on, Ireland, man. Scotland? That's crazy. They invented the golf tee, but they were banned Band. from playing but they, in the they golf invent, clubs. Wasn't the game of scuff, though, invented in Scotland or it, something? It yeah. was. Okay. So was that tee invented there? I, no, it, I, I'm not. It, it was invented. Were you here. there when they it, invented it? That's what I. No, mean. I wasn't there. So and it, it's but, interesting because who, who, how they hit the ball off? Of what were they hitting the ball? Well, off? You can hit it around the ground. Like well, yeah. a football yeah. kicker, you know. Well, but when the the you hit, when you play golf and the golf is in the fairway, you're not using a tee. Yeah. Well, see, if, if, <laughs> that's right. right. I mean, yeah. but I just would like to know the circumstances. Sure. I'm inventing uh, the well, look it up. Tea. You got the computer in front of you. You know, where with the for the ball, if blacks never played the golf a lot. 
But what, what was the well, back situation? Then, you know, let me let me let me, but let me tell what, well, let me tell you how that works. Understand that most of of the blacks were able to go and caddy. And so they were the ones going around and they were chasing the oh, balls right, and watching right, the, the watching bags, the guy right. throwing the bags and that you know, and he probably sat back and said, "You know what? I what can, about if I could if mm-hmm. I if I can lift that ball off the ground a little bit?" Right. And my that. guy and my guy can and my guy can get hit it farther. Can hit it longer, less drag on less the drag on the clock. 1899. Yeah, eighteen ninety nine for this stuff. So, yeah, turn of the century. Yeah, turn stuff. of the century stuff. Oh, and then you talk about you talk about the lemon squeezer. You talk about locks. You talk about Wait, gas man. What kind of locks? I'm Fish talking not, locks or no, or the, no, no the locks okay. on your on your oh, home. As soon as you said that, I knew it wasn't what not, you were thinking. <laughs> so sorry. Anyway, you <laughs> messing up. <laughs> you're, you're messing up my route. Eye, eye protectors. Uh, electric light. Uh, what kind electric, of eye, which wait, an eye protector? Yeah, what kind of eye protector? Like shields? The shields around your eyes. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that was done by Powell Johnson. What, for like welding? or For something? welding uh, and those type okay, of things. Okay. Yes, uh-huh. And then you're, you're talking about the hairbrush. Her name was Linda uh, Linda Newman, well, now 1898. That, now, that's yeah. interesting, really, because black and white folks have different types of hair. Right. And it's interesting that a black invented the, the hairbrush. But over time, they they added on to it and said, hey, we have to make this for a certain Universal. type of hair. See, and I thought you were going to say something different. It's, it's funny that all the products you've mentioned so far have all been invented by men until... The first fashion product, basically, yes, sir. that came out was invented that, by a woman. I didn't even think That's why I thought you were going yeah. with it, but that, that's what just struck out right. at me. Because I can't relate to combs and hairs anymore, so I oh, forget. Uh, and we know about peanut butter, right? You know who did it? Mr. Peanut. Jif, Mr. No, Jif, was no. You know, right? You know who, right? I actually do. What? I'm you sorry. don't know your African American history? No, well, I'm teaching today. No, You're the student today. Preach, brother. Preach, preach to me. George Washington Carver. Carver. George Washington Carver. He, even the old guy back there yeah, knew, knew that. that. George Washington I Carver. Carver. I just don't know. I just wanted, I knew they invented it, but how? What was the situation? That made him decide that, that made peanut butter. Well, I mean, it's great to know that who did it, but why and what was the situation? Well, the, they weren't able to get protein because they weren't able to eat the meat, man, that they would that was getting slaughtered. Remember, they were getting the heads of the hog, they were getting the, they were getting the meat of right. the coin yeah. of the hog and that whole deal. And uh, George Washington Carver said, I have to be able to feed my family good stuff that's going to make them healthy, mm-hmm. right? And so he was a peanut farmer. Okay. And so through that, he was able to develop the a process, lot of things, the, the process, the process make of, of, of making it. And all he did was took it, ground it up in that hotel, added a little water to it, and it became peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Makes sense. What yeah. else? I, I, I love peanut butter. Yeah, and peanut butter is, is about protein. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a good protein thing. Every scoop oh, in I'll my eat, shake. I'll eat it out, just out of the, the spoon, just to the jar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what about the mailbox? I mean, who'd have thought about it, hey, man? Put a mailbox out there where the guy can just come by and just put it in yeah. there and, and see you when I see you. Okay. You know? Who is I, that? Uh, Again, where? Oh, that's cool. But what? Was the deciding factor? See, but I can Why see where that. Would, but see, but I can see where that would come from because you have your house, right. right? The male person probably was getting tired of going to and from, right? Or the person was tired of getting their mail strewn all over the place, right on the lawn, or, or the dogs coming to chase the right, mailman, right? Right. So you know what? What if we just put a, like a little box out here or something? Well, it didn't even have to be like on a post. Yeah. But that I could see right. at a necessity, right? right. But right. then who made the flag on the mailbox? It to was let prob- them know that there was mail in there. It was probably somebody advanced it and said, right. hey, exactly. the next exactly. yeah, the the next step. But these right. are just the inventors. Yeah, yeah. right. The initial yeah. concept. The initial concept right. in that whole deal. What about an insect destroyer gun? <laughs> Albert C. Richardson in 1899. I have one of those guns you see on TV where you put the salt in it and kill the flies. But what, what was an insect destroyer? Killer, just like in the south, hitting on the porch, and all these flies coming. It's called around. the zapper now, <laughs> right? The bug I mean, zapper. You know what? I don't know. I'm don't just know. reading yeah, these no, off. Yeah. No, I don't know, saying. and I'm, I'm sitting here saying, <laughs> "What was he thinking about?" It's just well. well, well yeah, let me let me let me say this. Out. How did they invent a toothpick? It was somebody, a farmer, sitting on the dog on well, sitting on the yeah. the porch, right? right. He just and had dinner, it right? In his tooth. Well before yeah, meets, dental floss. Yeah, well before dental floss, and he takes the piece of. A twig stem or and twig or whatever, yeah. and he started picking his teeth. And someone came out and said, Man, that's, that's a great idea, man. 
Let's go ahead, man, and get a bunch of wood and let's sharpen the end of it and see how that works. And here right? we are. And here we are later, today. Hundred years later. Hundred right? years later, we got a toothpick. What about the guitar? Are you guys who do you play the guitar? I do not. You don't play the guitar. I do have two guitars. I don't play right. very well. Right. Okay. But that would make sense. Yeah. Technically, when yeah. was the guitar? That was 1886. Robert F. Fleming Jr. Hmm. was the guy that invented it. And he invented it because of spiritual music. Right. You know, they put together bands. They had church. And they said, man, we got to have some music. And they developed the guitar. I could buy it. Along with the I piano. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I mean, there's so many. The folding bed, fire extinguishers. Oh, I I'm telling See, you. The, again, the fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. Whoever the, the guy who invented it, what's the name? Uh, his name is Thomas Mitchell oh. in 1872. So what was Thomas Mitchell doing at that moment? What made him decide? I loved all this stuff. I'm great to find out who invented it, but what was the reason? The fire extinguisher. Right. Did he live in a, somewhere well, when they... Think about, fire, think about how they put out fires. Think about how they put out fires back. And they water. didn't have pump, they didn't have pumpers. They, they had a bucket brigade. Right. Yeah. So somebody probably looked at that and said, "There's got to be a more Better efficient way, way right. to get water to put out a fire." Absolutely. And this person saw something about pressure. Maybe he was a fire. Uh, and, yeah, he could have been one of those people department. on the yeah. line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What about an egg beater, Willie Johnson in 1884? And, what was he thinking about? <laughs> That's Make, making that's, a nice omelet or yes. something of that nature back Because a fork would use just be just yeah. as good as an egg beater, but right. we have egg beater too, so I get I get it. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean but the, the egg beater is used for more than yeah. just eggs. Yes. yes, a lot of baking folks yeah. use it for right. stirring mm -hmm. and mixing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I mean you can go on this thermostat control, Frederick M. Jones, 1960. Traffic light, Garrett Morgan, 1923. The tricycle, Matthew A. Cherry, 1886. Yeah. So people got to realize and understand that the inventions, the start of these things that we use every day right. was done by African-American people, black right. inventors. Right. And then they obviously, like you said, it's the initial concept. But of everything that you listed there, I took note, the last three were all in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. And you had one earlier that was like 1946, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those four, the only ones in the 1900s. Everything else was the 18s, yeah. right? The 19th century. That's now, right. the traffic light, I, that would be interesting to find out. Was he in a horse and buggy and somebody tried to cut him off? Hey! <laughs> you know, I don't, you know. Or the cop doing traffic control in the corner, you know, in the middle with all four right. lanes coming at him? <laughs> So, right. that, I mean, that's a great list. Well, you know, the thing about it, here, here's the only thing I'm, I'm saying is that, once again, people haven't gotten all of the history right. of America. Mm -hmm. And that's why Black History Month was invented. It was to tell the, 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 the right. part that's been right. left out mm -hmm. uh, that's giving us less information about who America really is. I want to ask this question, and, and there's no facetious nature in my question in sure, asking this. Sure, sure. So throughout all of Black history, in your mind, mm -hmm. as someone who's lived it, because yes. obviously he and I can't put our you know our feet in your shoes having, having lived that. Sure. Give me, like, the, in your mind, the top five to ten who you feel are the most influential Black Americans that this country has ever had the pleasure of having their feet walk on in your mind as someone who's been obviously comes from that heritage i know i'm putting you well, on the spot so well, that's all right um, and maybe outside the the normal ones like mlk and whatnot but who, who comes to mind frederick douglas is the first one that i think about yeah. because uh he was standing up against for, uh, slavery okay mm -hmm. and uh once again he wanted to see his people free sure and for him to start um you know um letting people know that hey you're a free people mm -hmm. and you you're, you're smart you're intelligent um you're able to do things in that don't deal i think that gave everyone man some encouragement okay. about who they are and what they look like in that okay. deal mm -hmm. because remember black was always demonized right. in our society right. in that whole deal right. and a lot of folks use the bible in that sense as right, well right as as well so w when black people would look at themselves right. they say i'm less than Gotcha. Right. Okay. Okay. And so with him. And then the other one for me was Malcolm X, because Malcolm X had the opportunity to go over 
to Egypt. He went over to Mecca. And when he went over there as a Muslim, mm -hmm. right, he went over there and all he was taught here in America is that black was the thing, black people, mm -hmm. black people, mm -hmm. and white people were, were the devil. Mm -hmm. But when he went to Mecca and saw that Islam was about all colors, all hues, didn't discriminate it against anything, he came back to America and says, I am no longer a black Muslim. I am just a Muslim because I saw with my own eyes that everybody's accepted. Right. And I, again, that goes back to something we were talking about before <clears throat> we went on the air, the label of black, whatever, white, whatever, Chinese, whatever, first Jewish, black, this, first whatever. this, yeah. Just Hopefully someday when we're talking about this, we can get rid of that because we are all equal. Right, right. You know, you, the old saying, we all bleed red. So why is that any different what the outside is all about? Now, we all have different cultures and backgrounds that got us to today. I get that. Right. But it does it. It shouldn't be that way. Just that label of black this, black that, white this, right. Chinese this, Jewish. I'm sorry, but we we should be in a society where that is not needed anymore. Maybe Absolutely not. Years from now, maybe I agree. Two hundred years from now, I, I just agree. don't see that happening in our lifetime. I mean, it's just going to continue. And, and then the next, oh, and then the son. <laughs> I'm sorry. He says you better add yourself in there, even if it's number ten A. <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah, and then the, your son and, out there in Jersey. And then the other one is my father-in-law. Okay, my father-in-law was a Buffalo soldier oh, in the really? in, in our yeah in our military wow. in that whole deal, right? He went wow. to war. He went over to Italy sure. over there, and he got injured. He got wow. bayoneted, and the whole deal. He came out as a high-end sergeant. He was one of the top guys. He was the guy that would uh, put calculate in that whole deal, where the cannons would go off and would drop it right down on your head he was that guy wow. and when he came back home he sat he sat with me one day and he says rick I, I just want to tell you my story i says yes dad let's sit down and talk okay he would sit there man and tears would come down his eyes because being over there and fighting man fighting the front line and protecting america and that whole deal he thought that it was that's what it was all about right he, they'll treat me right when i come back home when he came back home Everybody else got off the ship. All the white soldiers got off of the ship, right? Mm -hmm. During the day, black soldiers had to stay on at night until nighttime so that the folks didn't see the black soldiers getting off of the doggone uh, wow. ship. And then when he would go back home and get on the bus, they made everybody get off the bus so that he didn't touch them and made them get off when he got off the bus so that he didn't touch them. Jeez. So those are the stories in the household right. that let you understand why we are fighting for equality. Mm -hmm. We love America. Yeah. America gave us an opportunity and a chance. But do America love us back? Right. That's the question. Yep. Now, I think, again, it's way better now than it ever has been. Don't you think? I know there's pockets of society and there's certain events or situations that happen that remind us sometimes regrettably that we're not there yet but i mean like we talked earlier i don't know if it's ever going to be completely you know the eliminating the the actual racial part of it or the first black this the first white guy the first this that mm -hmm. and it's good to recognize mm -hmm. there's no doubt right the list here is a perfect example of all that stuff mm -hmm. And then, and then the next one is my is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting and listening to him uh, in his speeches and that whole deal. And the main, main number one thing that I heard him say is that everybody, everybody is important. Everybody is equal. But when you ask, when you ask a bootless man to pull himself up by his bootstraps, how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. When you don't have anything, you weren't given land when you came out of slavery, right. mm -hmm. but you had the European immigrants who came here to America and they were given land so that they could come and live here. Most of the immigrants from Europe did not come in the bowels of a ship. Mm -hmm. They came out, they came on the top of a ship, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Those are facts. So that's why, man, when we sit back and look and we say, does America love us like we love love America? Because remember, America was built on the backs of slaves. Mm -hmm. America wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for that. Right. Well, and again, we use the term well, racist. The definition is a particular uh, uh, race feeling superior to another. Right. It didn't say right. anything about 
whites feeling better than blacks or Asians feeling better than Mexicans. It just says a, a race that feels superior to another right. is considered a racist. We treated the Irish horribly. Mm -hmm. Potato farmers, you fucking potato girl. Eh. And they came across on the ship too. Mm -hmm. Irish were hammered. Right. You know, you know again, why? Do you know why? Understand the Moors went all up through Ireland. The Moors of Africa defeated Spain, defeated France, defeated England, went up into Scotland, defeated Italy, all of that. These folks have black blood in their system. Yeah. Well, France never That's won, why. They never won a war ever. So That's why. And people <laughs> need to know their history. Absolutely. If you know your history, then you understand why certain ethnic groups right. were treated that way. Absolutely. All right. We're going to step aside for a moment, take a quick Again? break. Well, listen, you know, again, you know, when we run our mouths, that's what happened. The time goes by. I love it. And the when you get conversations really, really well, good. I was just going to so say, I love when it. When you yeah. get soaked into a conversation, then you don't even worry about time. You just get engrossed in it. But unfortunately, we do have bills to pay. We do. And now we have a photographer in studio that we must look good for. But anyway. I forgot my wallet for the bills. <laughs> that's right. All right. When we come back, we're going to get to America Speaks because I know George has been chopping out the bit with a few topics for us to respond chomp, chomp, chomp. to your comments about certain topics and then who knows from there we'll figure it out after that you're watching the round table with the mouth with the best punt returner kick returner wide receiver in the nfl as far as we're concerned and me we'll be right back i was right. surrounded by the voice in the mouth hi i'm judy mario i invite you to watch my show what's your story with judy mario on wwdb tv where i interview celebrities doctors authors, professional speakers, and just plain folks like you and me. So watch my show and also watch some of the other great shows that we have here on WWDB-TV. And you can also find us on Roku. WDB-TV, your channel for original content, interviews, music videos, sports, and infotainment. Broadcasting worldwide from Las Vegas, Nevada. Search for us on Roku. That's WWDB TV. Thank you for your support. I'm Miss Murder, and I have a question for you. Have you ever explored the beauty and horror? I'm Mercedes M. Yardley, known as Miss Murder. I'm a dark fantasist who wears poisonous flowers in my hair. Among my many titles, I'm the author of the Stabby award-winning book titled Apocalyptic Montessa and Nuclear Lulu, A Tale of Atomic Love, as well as winning the prestigious Bram Stoker Award for my novella, Little Dead Red. My short story, Loving You Darkly, also received a Bram Stoker nomination. Check out all of my titles at www.mercedesmyardley.com, where I remind you that all things are dark, darling. Hey, welcome back to the round table. You know who we are, so we don't have to repeat that. As we are sitting here, before we get to America Speaks, uh, Rick was talking about a book he has here on the, oh, over here. Yep. Over here now, we're over here. Where am I going? Which camera am I going to? Don't yeah. fuck with Right me. over there. Don't fuck with my camera. We're shit. over there. Anyway, we're straight ahead. Anyway, yeah, talk about are. the book you have here. A great book here. It has tons and tons of pictures. Uh, it gives everybody historical an, pictures. It, historical yeah. pictures and that as And it's called Our America, and it's done by Ken Burns. Ken Burns, great photographer, uh, great narrator. He he tells the story and he tells the truth about everything and that whole deal for sure. He really does. He's really truthful, and his stuff is clean and that whole deal. But I suggest that everyone who wants to learn about African American studies, or 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 our country, in that in that sense, to go out and get this book right here. You can get it from Amazon, and uh, it it'll do you a lot of good. And also, folks, sit down with your children, and teach them the history. Don't be afraid to teach them, because the only thing we do is when we don't teach our children is leave them ignorant. And that's a perfect book to have sitting in the house on the coffee table or the kitchen table so you can pick it up when you got a few right. minutes and just flip through it and learn something absolutely about and America, all it is i thumbed through a couple of pages during the break and it is just pictures with a little caption underneath where cool. and, the, and the year that it was and just a few pictures i looked at the emotion you can see in the pictures right is is outstanding. their feeling or their emotion their whatever yeah. they were going through at the time mm -hmm. yes yeah absolutely and like like rick said ken burns he's done a lot of the baseball documentaries if you if you have the mlb network you'll see different documentaries about baseball different errors and things like that that he's done all right with that george 
You know what time it is? Oh, God. America Speaks. I like it better when John does it. Well, there you go. He's got it. Here we go. <laughs> America Speaks. Is that I have an online break. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi there. Welcome back. George, take it away. America Speaks, baby. We're here and we're going to discuss since we're talking about Black History Month. Well, let's talk about what the basis of America Speak segment is. Not that we're going to talk about it. Right. Uh, It is the NFL this weekend, so I came up with some topics considering this weekend and and ties in with Black History Month. What I'm going to do every the last segment of each show is I'm going to pull up some topics from the news. And again, you see a lot of they have a comment section. And America puts their comment. They write their comments in there. So the goal for me is to share these particular subjects and the comments that go along with it. Again, some of these comics, they're, they're comments, they're from America. They're from you. They're not from me, Rick, or Aaron. Now, we might discuss some comments that we that I read off, and we might choose one or two and discuss the comment of the comment, mm-hmm. right? Okay, well, since it's NFL weekend, the Super Bowl, uh, Roger Goodell had a briefing this week during down there in, the, in Arizona concerning certain topics in the NFL, woke topics hiring females in the NFL and uh, other stuff that I've got. Now, in particular, Roger Goodell was asked about hiring black head coaches, black coordinators, black general managers, and even black senior managers. And he took about 20 questions from reporters about this particular subject. He said there's warm work ahead of us, which is true. That He said, I think there's progress and we're pleased to see progress, but it's never enough. Now, why did this take so long? Because this is the first Super Bowl that features two starting quarterbacks. NFL's been around 100 years. Why did it take so long? Again, I don't have that answer. I don't know if any of us do. But he was asked why it took the NFL 57 years since the, to, to arrive at this moment where both starting quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. He said there's probably a variety of reasons. Probably none of them were good. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have 11 black starting quarterbacks today. We have 11. Two are in the Super Bowl. Now, we are going to go down and we're going to discuss some of these comments about uh, what America thinks and America speaks about this particular subject. So we're going down here. We first one, Cold Warrior 214. Unfortunately, the NFL has ceased to be about competition. It has become the NBA. All show and no substance. Actually, more like pro wrestling. Oh, whoa. It's just, oh, man. Hey, go to right. hell. Yeah, the low, the waist, oh, right. what, dude? It's just a show to enrich players Drop with no me. real regard for the game itself. <laughs> now, here's another one. The NFL is woke. This is from just a minute. Therefore, anything they have to say is meaningless. The NFL is composed of millionaire gladiators. Professional sports is of no interest to me. Okay. Now, here's another one. Bunny Macaroon. <laughs> Gunny G- Goodell knows his market. Gladly, I'm not in any of his target demographics. I don't know what he meant by that. But well, uh, what was it? What was that handle? Bunny what? Bunny macaroon. How do you take anybody serious with that guy? Right. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I'm right. sorry. Here's another one. Arn WKR. I stopped watching the NFL when the African millionaires had to kneel for the national anthem. Okay, that's one where we can stop and actually discuss since this has been in the last five or six seasons when uh, uh, when uh, Kaepernick knelt down. So uh, what do you think about that comment? Hey, I'm sure there's millions of folks that feel the same way. What was it again? What was about, comment? Uh, he said he stopped watching the NFL after Amer- African-American millionaires and gladiators started kneeling. Yeah, and and well, not honoring the, the Yeah, I wish the, I could stop watching the NFL yeah. over this, but I did that after the kneeling. Well, you know, once again, everybody has the right, uh, you know, with their feelings in that whole deal. And mm-hmm. I, think, I think if that's bugs you and it's not what you think is right uh then you don't watch it you don't you don't and you don't ingrain yourself in that net deal but there was a purpose for it in that whole deal and some people didn't listen to what the purpose was and so therefore they're going to say talk about multi-millionaires and things of that nature being out there who did they go out there and they earn their money mm-hmm. i would like to see that person go out there and play that game, and they will say the same thing. I've earned this money. Right. I've played my butt off from high school to college, and now to the pros. I was able to make it. So once again, regardless of whether they're multimillionaires, so all and also, gang, they go out and they entertain. 
They entertain people every weekend. And people see everybody what? On the weekend, on the game day, but they don't see the process during the week. But let's remember what what the Kaeper, Kaep, what was going on in society at that time when Kaepernick decided to kneel, and that was the police brutality and right. things like that. So it's not that he just woke up one day and said, you "No, know I what? get it." But no, no, I'm I'm just reminding our our Audience, listeners about right. now. You talked about why the quarterbacks were you know had happened before, and Rick Maltham says he has an he has an answer to that. You had an answer to one of the comments that he made about why the league hasn't had. Uh, the black quarterback, black before, quarter, yeah. or whatever you said, you had an answer yeah, about right, something, and I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, if well, it, if you remember back back in the day, the NFL, the NFL was racist. The owners were racist. They were. I played in the league. I've had the chance and opportunity to talk to guys before me, the Gene Mingos, who played in the 1960s. If you remember the 1965 All Star Game down in New Orleans, when they flew down there to play that game. The black ball players weren't allowed to stay in the hotel with right. the white ball players or eat with them. They protested that game. Mm -hmm. So protest in sports has always been around. Gotcha. It's always been around. Right. And what it's to, and, and what it's meant to do is to make change. Right. Well, again, this is what Aaron was talking about before the show, before you got here. Here's H Man Dash R102 retired. Why can't the NFL just be about young men playing a great game? a group of excellent athletes playing a great game. Eliminate politics and accentuate sports athletics. Let them wear jerseys and helmets as we observe the best of athleticism and not see the color of their skin or judge their performance based on the color of their skin. Like but wrestling. If you, but if you don't have any scandals, who wants to watch? Who wants to hear about all of the good stuff all the time? There's got to be some scandals. I don't care what it is, whether it's sports, whether it's football, whether it's tennis, Serena, Right, they were all over her in that old deal. Tiger, they was all over Tiger. So it it it's broad. It's well, not in just one sport. Yeah, the, the negative stuff though is what unfortunately sells newspapers. And that's right. There's a reason when you watch your local news, the stories of the firemen climbing up the tree to save the cat is in the last thirty seconds of a news report. That's right. There's that's reasons right. for that. But that's right. And and as far as the quarterbacks, they didn't want to have to answer to them. Those owners didn't want to have to answer to the quarterback, and the coaches didn't want to have to answer and talk right. to those quarterbacks. Right. So most of the black quarterbacks, it's until uh, James Harris came into the league in that ordeal, were made wide receivers. Right. They switched them. Interesting. Well, this one. This All right, what do we got next? One, the last yep. one of this, of this okay, particular this topic. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cook 647. Okay, Roger, time for a black commissioner to replace you, bro. Would that make any difference? In some areas, maybe. Maybe in some areas, but you still have to have protocol. Right. You still have mm -hmm. to have discipline. Right. You still have still to have, have rules. You still have to have a process. Yeah, it's not about your, the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. It's about, man, making sure, man, that everybody's doing the right thing so that everybody enjoys the game. Absolutely. All right, George, what's next? Okay, we're going to go to court. We're going back in with Alec Baldwin. He's now being sued, which is not surprising, by Helena Hutchison's family for uh, – her death and now we have we understand now he had spoken to i guess the family right after it happened and everything seemed okay but again when you can sue and you lost a loved one i certainly understand that kind of thing but uh here's some actual comments of conversations of uh what do they think about this situation this guy named uh, democratic wine I believe Alec Baldwin. In fact, I'm sitting downstairs now, and one of my revolvers upstairs just discharged spontaneously. It happens two or three times a week. Obviously, that's sarcasm. So, okay, how about uh, Ben Tar Bar Practitioner? This is crazy. Why can't I shoot some little people and just laugh about it later? I have no doubt I'll get off scot-free. People as important as me don't go to jail, Baldwin stated. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, what do you think about this? You know, his uh, widower's already worked out a lucrative deal with Baldwin by which he gets a producer credit and money in exchange for a dismal civil charge, dismissal of civil charges. Baldwin is a creep, but I think this coward could get away with it. Well, how much money do you think uh, his family should get? I mean, you know, we're reading all these comments. Nobody seems to like Alec Baldwin. I think yeah, I think the public turned on him years before this, this incident. There was something that I would seem to recall 
and, and I don't remember the exact incident, but years ago, I'll say maybe five, six years ago, something happened surrounding Baldwin uh, and the public kind of turned sour. Maybe it was uh, an appearance on Saturday Night Live or he, he didn't make an appearance or something. And I think that is aiding towards bringing gasoline to the bonfire around Alec Baldwin. Right. How about this one, Alec? Uh, this is by Q Vochnik 099. Alec Baldwin starring in a new movie with Tom Cruise. It's called Prop Gun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ooh, pardon the pun. <laughs> That's cold. Blood. That's below the waist, too. It is. Wow. WTF Dummy 422. Would he have known the difference between a blank and a live round? Is this included in the training? They'll probably get him off on everything but, else. But it wasn't his fault. The prop master is in control of all of that, right? Right. Which, it, although on that movie, wasn't he the prop master? No, she, there was no. a woman, no, a young a woman, woman who was about 25, 24. Okay. Her father okay. had been a famous, well-known uh, prop guy in gotcha. Hollywood. That's right. So she probably got the job, nepotism. Or, but you would think she would have learned at least to do that. And again, they said the last person with the gun in their hand should also check it. Of course. Yeah, and, and that's what my grandfather always told me. Mm -hmm. He says, Rick, I want you to check three times, man, before you put that gun in that corner to make sure that there's nothing in it. And Alec Baldwin should have done the same thing. That's yeah. just my opinion. And that way, man, he's sure that when he's pointing a gun at anybody, mm -hmm. that is clear. I want to I want to just mention a comment that's in the chat room from some guy named Sharif Upchurch. <laughs> Been going on the football stuff. Okay. His, uh, comment, his comment here was, the problem with the comments by these people is that there's politics involved in everything. Not everyone has a platform to show how they feel. So when a black athlete does anything remotely, the standing up for something, it has to be a racial problem. When, in fact, it probably isn't unless you get the facts from that individual. There you go. I get it. We always throw the race card. The, the, yeah, the yeah. racist word out there if somebody doesn't agree with anything absolutely right? you know and I'm, i always make this comment sometimes they get in trouble for it i said they people throw the world racist around more than a basketball okay yeah but, right, but, right. For, so, but for me george i have to look at the background of the individual who said correct it. Mm -hmm. i look at each individual mm -hmm. if this is a history of you doing this that tells me who you are well whether it's smoke there's fire whether it's smoke, well then fire. since you brought that up again we've talked about black motors or black folks getting beat up or killed by the cops right mm -hmm. uh would it make a difference so i get a no 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 nobody d deserves to die by the cops unless they are threatening their life or not the difference with this uh gentleman just in my memphis he had no record no nothing those cops shouldn't have done what they did and even though they were all black they still should have done what they did now again i'm just throwing the name out there this is just the devil's advocate george sure. floyd sure. he had a rap sheet longer than my dick sure which is <laughs> woo. oh my goodness so but but <laughs> thanks for watching the last show oh of right there, right. <laughs> but no but did i you know why folks he's now known as the mouth, <laughs> mouth right yeah he's the mouth now did george he floyd wishes deserve to die no but he again, lost. he was in this situation over and over and over again, always doing something or breaking the law or assuming they were breaking. It's always found himself in trouble. And my father was always one of those guys, if you don't want any trouble, don't go out after midnight, stay at home, don't do anything, you know, wrong. Just follow the rules of law and you live your life. It's very easy just to to follow the rules and the law. But, and, but, but people like separating someone like George Floyd and the gentleman in Memphis, there was two different characters of people there. Yeah. yeah. But neither one yeah. of them should have died regardless. I that's, 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 it. What it, that's, that's what, what I'm discussing. Right. right. Yes. But anything, you know, like you said earlier that, uh, you know, did anybody deserve it? No. All right. We, we're we have about, we have about one minute. Okay. Left, one so more. I'm going to read a more, a couple more about Eric, uh, Alec Baldwin. And uh, okay. Use America first us two zero three. Hutchins passed away on October 21st, 2021, after a gun Baldwin was holding fired on the New Mexico movie set. Wrong. Baldwin fired the gun. The gun didn't fire itself. That's true. So that's pretty much it with America Speaks. Again, we had to go back with Alec Baldwin because this is just an ongoing story. And we'll do this every week for the next <laughs> uh, few weeks of uh, February. Yep. We're going to pick some, you know, Black History Month. We're going to pick some stories and have comments that uh, America wants you to hear by the way some lady in the chat room by the name of denise says i don't know him oh god <laughs> <laughs>
Well, because of the, the longer than my dick comment. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Let me just clap. I'm sure she, she could tell you the truth. So let's yeah, not. Yeah, that's go why there. she's I'll, saying I don't know who he's talking I'm about. My anyway. Mouth. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, a good, that's a good deal, right? I'm there, Jewish. Bro. I have no clue what the hell you're talking about. I was going to say anyway, the same thing. But, you know. All right. Listen, great stuff. Great stuff. I look forward to because I learned a lot just listening to the names of these these individuals who created the initial concept of stuff we use every day because I didn't know. And I and I I'm looking forward to what we're going to do the next couple of weeks. America speaks. God only knows what what George is going to cook up next week, because if it's anybody with a rap sheet next week, I am afraid for the listeners. Right. Anyway, guys, <laughs> great show today. George, final thoughts as we go out. Keep your head above water, guys. Enjoy the Super Bowl. I'm going to throw it out there real quick. We didn't really discuss it. Oh, go no, Eagles. Didn't. Go Eagles. That's why I think it's going to win. All right, Rick, hey. while you're at it, let's give you a prediction, too. Yeah, folks, uh, the thing about it with me, with Black History Month, don't be afraid of Black History Month. Mm -hmm. All it is is just education and making yourself and your children well-rounded. Absolutely. And a prediction for the ball? Well, I'm going with Philly. I like Philly, and I think whoever has the ball last is going to win the football game. All right. There you have it. My prediction is, is that uh, the Yankees start spring training in a week. And really, that's all I care about <laughs> at this right. point. Because as a Giants fan, there's no way in hell I can root for the Eagles. Kansas City, I like Andy Reid. I just want it to be a good game. But if I have to pick, I have to stick with the NFC. <clears throat> and the, I can't even say it. Yeah, don't even. Be kind to everybody. Why is that? We're all half. Join me tomorrow, 9 a.m. for Kiwanis Connects with Governor Val and our guest tomorrow, Vicki Hermanson. Global Membership and Education Area Director for Qantas International. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here. On the round on table. On the round table. Yeah, what they said. <laughs>